Thank you. Uh, let me know when I'm done. Because uh, <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, I can already tell I'm going to get excited. Um, I, uh, I want to start out by saying well, one of the things we discussed up front in terms of coming to this panel was the, the how, uh, and I knew exactly what they meant, this, this idea that when you say, oh, <laughs> it's just lucky, you know, behind your hand. Oh, I don't know how I got to be the president. I'm so lucky. You know, how, how it's not luck, how it was ambition or skill or standing up for myself and saying, I'm cool, here I am. And, and I, with that said, I do think I was in the right place at the right time <laughs> for the career that I got, so and I'm really excited about that, So, and which is a good thing to have in one's career, uh, excitement and sort of wonder that you're here. Um, but I will, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the things that sort of brought me to where uh, I am today um, and, and continuing to go. I was part of, uh, in terms of sort of figuring out how to perhaps configure yourselves, um, I went up to uh, Boston to become a playwright. And, um, and my friend said, come to Boston, don't go to New York. In Boston, you can get a cappuccino and a bagel for less than $2. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's great, I'll do that. So, uh, and lo and behold, so much of the theater of, of Boston was cast out of New York and, and local theater was completely savaged in the Boston Phoenix. And there were all these people having song circles in their, their living rooms, there was open mics, there were concerts to go to that were celebrating this revival of folk music, and there were people doing uh, radio, you know, at Emerson College doing their first radio shows and they're doing their first radio shows and I was doing my first interviews. You know, we were all starting together um, and I fielded lots of um, uh, criticism and a lot of praise and a lot of praise for the wrong reasons because people just want to sleep with me or, you know, criticisms because they, you know, I mean, all those, those things mixing all together. And, and I actually, in retrospect, don't think any of that's bad. <laughs> I, I think that it was very social and very, uh, and, and there was a lot of bad information, but there was also a lot of great information and jewels in terms of moments of poetry and, and um, true, true artistry that, that were as inspiring as sort of feeling like I was getting better at guitar and getting better at what I was doing. There was one guy who used to sing and play and he played out a tune and then, and we loved him. And uh, one day he came with two people in business suits on either side and, and, and he played his song and he sat down and he said, I told you they love me. And he, they were his caseworkers. He was uh, not live, he was completely assisted in his living. Uh, so, um, so that kind of world of, of poetry being at all levels of, of society and humanity was, was the place to be, and that's where I grew. So I always recommend finding your scene for whatever you're going to do. For me, it was crucial. Um, and, um, and then there was a time when I had to leave that scene and come out to Northampton, which was awesome. Um, and I moved to Northampton. I said to my boyfriend, I'm just moving 100 miles away. <laughs> you don't have to dump me for that roommate of yours. Oh, I guess you do. And uh, <laughs> I was so uh, miserable here and, um, and when I first arrived. And I lived at 13... Graves Avenue. I mean, a really prophetic <laughs> thing about how I might be feeling in the next few months. And I sat down on that futon. I had nothing else to do. I was straight, wrong place. I mean, everything <laughs> was aligned for me to have solitude. And I uh, sat down and I put up pictures, and I bet you do this too, of, of, of women and goddesses and things that I loved and, and animals. I just cut out of magazines. I didn't have any money, but I just put it up on my wall, and then I had something that I'd written that said, um, be careful what you wish for because you might not be dreaming big enough, which was a nice <laughs> twist on you know, what you usually see. And I thought, oh, I don't even know what that could be. And every once in a while, I would have a sort of mental snapshot of what could happen. And, um, and, uh, and I think that was really healthy. I think that dreaming big is you know, saying, I would love for this, to, you know, a big fantasy life, big mental snapshots of, of what you would consider to be success, even vain success, is great, but then you set the bar really low. <laughs> you know, so I was like, I'll be successful if I can just sing backup vocals for that person at this tiny venue. 
I would consider that to be the pinnacle of success. And, um, and actually once I thought, you know what, I'm listening, uh, actually this is in Boston, I thought, I'm listening to this person, he's a local singer-songwriter, he's doing a beautiful job, he's got this woman singing backup vocals for him, they sound great, Boston local folks, they're playing at Pessim, they're doing their thing, that is, uh, whatever they are, that's what I'll do, this lovely woman, and it was Eric Anderson, it was Joni Mitchell singing <laughs> backup vocals, <laughs> and I thought, see, what do I know? And, and so anyway, I, um, so that, so the, and, and it was here that it all came together. And I'm so grateful. I had a lot of friends looking out for me. Again, song circles, a lot of great advice and kindness and guidance and the iron horse to help me along and put me in front of different kinds of audiences. And, and so that, that sort of crazy quilt of, of community also really came through as I was sitting on my futon writing. And um, also, so then I, so then, I became a full-time artist <laughs> doing what I do now, basically. And it uh, has been a great ride. But um, early on, I had to kind of stake out, there, there's something I figured out early on, luckily, really, and I mean the earlier the better, there's this thing that I call the numbers. And you really have to be careful about the numbers. The numbers are your height, your weight, your audience size, your rank, your billboard rank, your record sales, which nobody has anymore, so that's cool, but, you know, what, all of these, all of these facts and figures, um, concentrating on those, you know, so-and-so's here and I'm here, it's, it is pretty toxic. It's somewhat unavoidable, so you can't, you know, in terms of your vanity, you, it, you're not going to avoid doing some numbers. And especially, I love, uh, there's one number that I think is fine to think about, and that is money, because <laughs> it's good to think about what you need. And that actually, if you know what you need, then you don't feel like you're a black hole of spending, and then you don't feel like you have to make an infinite amount of money to make what you need. And, and that can get people really anxious and shopping more. So, so knowing the money, and I, I like to figure out you know, where I stand with money and what I'm netting and how I'm doing in a year, because I'm self-employed, and I call that my replacement for an eating disorder. Because so, I don't count calories, but I count you know, my, my budget, and, my, and I make sure that that's organized, and, I, you know, and then I have fun in my body. So um, anyway, that is, uh, as I became more successful, I started to see some of the, you know, the pitfalls that I could go into. And it was really important to find ways out of them, uh, to, to, to avoid them the best as possible, because it, it, you're kind of moving fast, so fast that you don't have a lot of time to dwell in the stuff that's going to bring you down. Um, so uh, I tried to, what I tried to do is I tried to steer towards creativity and away from the numbers. Uh, so creativity, uh, Julia Cameron's book was a huge help. Do you know Julia Cameron's The Artist Way? It really is pretty, you know, it's, it, it does the trick. It is, it is, um, so it is, is quite, it, whether you're feeling kind of uh, or, you know, stuck, or if you're trying to find your passion, which is, you know, just, just knowing what turns you on is so great, you know, and, and it, it really helped me writing my morning pages and unclogging my, you know, getting the faucet just to, to run for a little bit was great. Um, and respecting the little voices in my head, you know, they could be this loud, but I would just know that it was a poetic moment and I would know to respect that that was what was going on. Um, you know, just, just like the voice of identity might sound a little soft at times, but you kind of know that that's the real thing. Um, so I started to, to do that. I would commit myself to what Julia Cameron calls artist dates, which for me is a combination of going to um, museums and really bad chick flicks, or I would say really good chick flicks. Um, and, um, and also, this is, this is something that su success, you know, that, that doing this for a living gave me. I was able to defend my creative time. And I actually said to somebody once, enough of your asking for more time from me. Because frankly, I'm, I can lie and say I'm going to the dentist, but the truth is, I'm wandering in a field. And, and that's, my, that's what I do for a living. And, and the guy, who you know, was a dude, and he's like, and he said, that's fine, I get it, and thank you for letting me know. That's, I respect you for that. So, so sometimes, uh, you, you come through for yourself and people are right there with you. Um, so, uh, so those were the things that, um, helped me sort of kind of keep with this, because now I do this for a living, you know? And so I kind of need to keep myself open and creative. And, um, 
and that's that's a that's a thing. Um, so the other thing is um, what I call uh, things that I developed, which are work skills, work ethics. Um, and I came to learn that there are some things that aren't bad, but they do need to be in attention. Your vanity. You know, I was so into the environment that for the first 10 years of my career, I never had shoes that matched anything that I wore. And, and I look back on some of those pictures and I thought, you know, I could have just, I mean, really, I think that the great mother earth would have understood if I got a couple of shoes here and I didn't give, you know, all my money to Audubon or, you know, and, and there was, there was a moment when you can sort of stand up and say, I, I think this is great. I'm going to spend my money and my time on my appearance, and that's part of my performance, and I'm going to, I'm going to be cool with that. And so, but at the same time, we know, you know that it can get out of control. So I think that's a tension that I had to develop uh, to really, uh, I had to respect that there would be a push-pull. Uh, and also um, hands-on involvement with the people that I worked with getting really involved with them, but at the same time letting them do things for me, but at the same time, you know, making sure I knew what I wanted. So, you know, letting them do some of the everyday things so that you can wander in a field, but at the same time, uh, letting them, uh, you know, know that, that you are in it with them. You're in it together. And I think that makes for good wisdom as well as, as working relationships. Um, getting good tools in terms of computers and tech and all that stuff. Again, that can even border on vanity. <laughs> like, you know, you just don't want to get too teched out and too immersed in your chords and your, at some point, you know, it's just you in a cafe and, uh, and your thoughts and that little story you had on your futon or on 13 Graves, you know, uh, that little story that turned into a bigger story and that fascinated you and you just followed that, that golden thread. And that's just not tech. And that's not necessarily even having all the right tools. You know, it's not even really having your act together all the time. Um, and uh, and the other thing that to have uh, something that's good in, in intention is flexibility. There's a gr it's really important to be very adaptive and flexible when you're traveling a lot. That's great, and I'm glad that I can do it. But uh, sometimes you have to s draw the, your lines. And um, and uh, I went to a therapist here in Northampton, and she'd say, how's this or that? And I'd say, it's, it's good. <laughs> and there's just a way that I said, and she said, it's not good. And you got to decide in your heart where you're going to bend and, and where you're going to stand straight and say, no, I really have to be in this moment not doing this. Um, so, uh, and then I discovered also there's two things that shouldn't be intention. The people that you work with need to be both excited for you and ambitious for you and uh, really excited that they, they have mental snapshots for you too. That just turned out to be something I came to understand was, you know, sometimes you need some people to pull you along and say, sure, you can play there. Sure, let's get a band. Let's get this going. Let's hire some people. You know, when I was like, when I was saying, oh, I'm just solo, you know, I can't have all those things around me. I had people around saying, get some drums. And, get some, uh, and, and it's funny because every boyfriend I had for like five years was a different member of the people I was playing with on stage. So I was so lucky. Um, <laughs> so the other thing it was, oh, and the other thing that I am not really intentioned about is understanding the money I want. You can always fantasize about having more money, but it's really just good to know, you know, to get that thing together, um, to know, to, to figure out something that you know, because a lot of people say, I don't know what I need. Just know what your rent is, know what your something is, you know, kind of try to figure out what the big lumps are, and then, and then say, and then I fantasize about having blah, blah. Um, it's really, there's something about women having sort of a sense of, somebody said money, money, sex, and food, nobody's healthy about all three. But, so I, but if, if money is something you feel unhealthy with, for me it's actually been comforting to know that, that there is, you know what you need and you know what you need to make and therefore you know what you, how much you can allot to your creative career versus another career or how much you have to work in your creative career. You know, it's, it's really good to have some, your feet on the ground. And I also think the workshop sounds like a wonderful thing because just figuring out what you want and talking to other people about it and, and defining those things, that will stay with you forever. Those will be great arrows for you uh, in the years ahead, decades. Um, 
And uh, lastly, uh, I wrote this little paragraph, which it's, I said, I am tempted to encourage compassion, humility, gratitude, and seeing the la landscape in a poetic way, because even though these are crucial skills in my career path, I've seen a lot of talented people sabotaged by their own bad attitudes, I have to say, both towards themselves or others. Um, I, have, I have always, uh, I will say, um, you know, it's, it's tempting to say, oh, it's just my career. I've always chosen to work with people who have those qualities, too, in the workforce. So whether you're, you know, in a creative career or not, having that kind of wisdom and a creative approach actually is a beautiful thing to have in any career path. Um, and, uh, and, that's, and that's who I've chosen to work with. And it's like, I love the people I work with. I love my work, and I love the, to work with people. Those are some of my closest friends. And, uh, and, I, and I feel like you know in your heart when you're doing the right thing. You know, you, you know. <laughs> and, um, and lastly, I'll say that um, I have a pretty healthy relationship with quitting, failure, and humiliation. It's, it's and you know, just to give you some assurance, it's not a, a, you know, in the nature versus nurture thing. It's nurture. You have to fail to be good at it to be good at failure, and so luckily I was able to fail and, uh, and to learn about what that felt like to, to realize, you know, I twisted my ankle and they said, no pain, no gain, you can still be a gymnast. And I said, but I want to be in the school play. And so I quit the gymnastics team and I expected all that sports stuff coming at me about quitting, quitting. And everyone said, that's great, you're not that good at gymnastics. <laughs> and I, found my home in, in, in the theater. And again, you know, relationships. I remember looking in the mirror in a restaurant in New Mexico and saying, oh my gosh, I'm about to drive three hours with this guy and I have to break up with him. And I have to do it now. And so spending three hours in a car hearing someone say, I don't think you know how to love. <laughs> and I said, really? You really watch that much television? So, uh, but... <laughs> It was good to, and then, and you know, there's some days, and I don't know if this happens to you, when I just have a cloud of embarrassment about something. I think, oh, I can't even, I don't, I don't think there's a, you know, October 1st in the last 10 years that I, ha that I can remember, you know, without cringing. You know, so, so, yeah, that stuff happens. I mean, there's a lot, in my life, there's a lot of improvisation and a lot of funny missteps, and so there's a lot of that. It's, there's some things, you know, I just signed up with a new person to work with today and I had all this information I did my due diligence and then I jumped and I'm all for that moment of saying I did as much as I can but there's always going to be a flaw in the rug and I'm kind of all about that so I will jump thank you very much